Hey everybody and welcome. So for today's video, let's go over how to create automated emails. But real quick, before we get into that, just a quick service announcement that if you go to my website, chrismarquez.com, you'll see a very simple website, but there's a few things here that I want to make you guys familiar with. One being uh, this YouTube form right here, that if you click on it, it'll send you to a Google form where you can ask me any questions related to Salesforce that you might have, whether you're stuck on a current project, need help debugging some code, whatever it might be, feel free to fill out that form and I'll be sure to get back to you either in the form of a video response on my YouTube channel or also through my newsletter, uh, which pretty much means also go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter because I will, I will be creating and sending emails through there. So I've already made a video on how to create automated emails in Salesforce uh, using record trigger flows, which, which you can see here. Now, today's video, it's basically going to be the same and it's going to piggyback off of that video. Uh, but with the key difference being instead of the email being triggered off of a status change or something, this one's going to be based off of a checkbox being checked. So yeah, let's kind of get into that. So in my trailhead org right here, I'm going to, in the setup, uh, search flow for flows. I'll click on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the flow we made in the previous video, and then we'll kind of modify it to work with our new case. So I think we had called this flow, uh, create automated email. So I'm going to just click into it. And like how I said, uh, watch that, watch that previous video. If you want to basically see the entire thing, but in a nutshell, it was just a record triggered flow that when some condition was met an email would be sent out to the uh, case owner. Uh, so before we do anything, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and click on save as, and I'm mostly doing this instead of creating a brand new flow from scratch, just to save you guys some time. Since if you've seen that previous video, this one should be pretty much similar and we're going to be doing a lot of the same things. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, right here in the save as I'm going to just create a new flow instead. And this one, I'm, I'm just going to call it send email when checkbox is checked, just to keep the name in line with the, the title of this video. So we'll go ahead and save this as a new flow. And here we go. So one thing before we kind of start working on this uh, that I completely forgot is let's go into our object manager and actually let's go ahead and create that uh, checkbox on the case. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the case right here and we're going to create a new field. So click on the new button right here and we want a checkbox, right? So choose checkbox, click next. And then for this one, um, we'll just call this email case owner which is not a great name, but it kind of gets the point across, at least for our purposes. So as I always say, please choose better names than I do. Anyway, so here I'm just going to leave everything as a default. Um, yeah, it's fine. I'll click, click next and I'll just add it to all the page layouts because I'm lazy and clicking save. All right. So once we have all of that, uh, very quick, let's just jump into our uh, sales app and open up a case, I guess. So in cases, if we just open up any of these, there should be email case owner right here. So like, like how I said, the idea is once that checkbox is checked, an email should be sent to the case owner, which in this case is just myself. All right, so let's go into our record triggered flow and I'm going to go ahead and ref refresh this flow just so that the checkbox we just created is available to us. So once we have all that, let's go ahead and click on edit on the record triggered flow and we'll go, go ahead and get rid of all of these conditions that we have here. And we're going to search for the, the checkbox that we just created, which is email case owner right here. And basically what you want is to say that when it's true, we want something to happen, right? So, uh, here we have a few options. Um, and kind of like how I said in my previous video, we want the email to be sent to the case owner whenever the checkbox is checked. So basically the checkbox goes from not being checked to being checked. And there's, I guess, two ways of accomplishing that same, um, the, the, that goal one the easiest one way to do it uh, would be probably to check this uh radio button right here which says only when a record is updated to meet the condition requirements basically it'll check to see if the checkbox went from false to true right if it changed status if you didn't want to do that or if you had additional conditions and you still want it to be only when it gets checked uh that an email s sends out then you can add another condition which would still be uh, email case owner is changed and you set the true. So basically if it changed to true, right? And again, like how I said in my previous video, if you don't do one, either one of these options, then basically if you had a record, if we go back to a case record here, and let's, let's, let's say this was already checked right previously, 
if if a user goes in and perhaps modifies another field, like for example, they add a web email here and they click on save, because this case technically meets the conditions where the email case owner is already checked, the email will be sent out, which is not what we want in this specific case. You only want it to be sent out when the checkbox is checked and it goes from false to true in this in this specific case. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, like how I said, we have our two ways of doing this. So I'm going to just choose the second option just to keep things a bit more clean. But yeah, feel free to mess around with this as it, as, as it fits your business use case. So for the flow optimization, we're going to choose this one because we need to send out an email and we can't do it with the fast field update. So make sure that's selected. Then we'll click on done right here. And we're almost done here. So now we will have the condition basically whenever that checkbox is checked, then the email will be sent out. We already have this established here, which I guess we'll, we can kind of go through just in case you didn't see my previous video. Uh, essentially what we did is we just added an email body. Uh, we have a, um, the recipient address list just being the email of the case owner. And we, ha we set the rich text body to true. And we just have a hard coded subject. Uh, for the email body, we created a text template, which I believe I can show you guys. Let me open this up and we can look at the email email body. As you can see here, it's pretty simple. It's just a text template. Um, it says fix this case record and then I retrieve the records case number. That's pretty much it. So that's pretty much done. But we ha what we have to do now is we have to uh, create some logic that will uncheck the box, right? Because at, at least the way I'm thinking of it in this business use case, what I want is that checkbox to act as like the mechanism to send the email. So what if we, for some reason there's like, we want that, that email to be sent out multiple times, right? Maybe uh, someone needs to be able to check it or there's some other process that checks this for us that will send out an email. So I think it would be kind of nice that the checkbox gets unchecked after the email is sent out. So in this case, what I would do is you can choose to add that, that logic before the email sent out or, or after the email sent out. I'm going to do it before and I'll kind of explain in a little bit, but what I want to do is before the email sent out, I'm going to use this update triggering record action. Let's go ahead and click on it. And here I'm going to call this uncheck email checkbox, something along those lines. Um, we want to use the case record that triggered the flow. So the first option right here, and there's no conditions because we're just using the record that was triggered off of this. We're going to search for the email checkbox right here. And basically what we want to do is we want to set it back to false. That way some other user, some other process can then go ahead and check the box and then re-trigger this flow right here. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So I'm going to go, go ahead and click on done. And the reason why I put this first is because let's say for, for some reason, if we had put this at the end right here, so an email got sent out, right? But then for some reason, the flow failed to update this case record. So you would you would have this condition where the email got sent out but the checkbox still stayed checked which i don't kind of i don't really don't like that situation i would rather have us first attempt to uncheck it and then if it failed then the email didn't get sent out right at least you'll have an error uh, message but the email will not be sent out that makes sense so i i always like to update my fields first before doing the action itself uh hopefully that makes sense to you guys that's like the 10th time i said this so anyways Let's go ahead and click on save and we'll activate it here. And now that it's active, we can go ahead and test this out. So back in our case, I'll just refresh the page and I'm going to go ahead and check the email case owner checkbox. Let's go ahead and click on save. And as it refreshed, you see here that it was unchecked, right? So that means it probably should have worked. So I'm going to go ahead and check my email real quick and I'll show you guys the uh, screenshots. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, just a quick video just to kind of demonstrate this. Uh, like I was like how I said, I'm just making these. I just felt like making this video just to kind of provide you guys more options and how you can go ahead and structure your flows when it comes to sending out emails. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below or submit a question to the uh, YouTube forum. Subscribe to my newsletter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.